Mr. Lee, I, I, I listened to your statement, and I have to wonder. I don't know why one would even suggest or have to feel the necessity to say that we are not trying to promote instability in Venezuela. We clearly are not trying to promote instability in Venezuela. But if we're going to make that statement about human rights and democracy any place in the world, forget about Venezuela, we're in a sad state of affairs. This is not an American view. This is what the OAS Charter says. This is what the Inter-American Democratic Charter says. This is what the UN Convention on the UN uh, uh, Declaration of Human Rights entails. So, you know, when you say that, and then when you say, and I, I can't believe that you included it in your opening remarks, suggesting that President Maduro wants to improve our bilateral relationships. Yeah, that's a good way to do it, by unilaterally striking at reducing our embassy and taking a whole host of other aggressive and active postures uh, against the United States, I, I just, it, 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 it boggles the, my imagination. It also worries me when the State Department in a different context, I know you were down in Cuba before all the announcements, I guess I should have seen your effusiveness as a sign of things to come, uh, and then see that Others in the department talked about it's not who you invite to the table speaking to the Summit of the Americas, but what you speak about. Well, here we are with both Cuba, which of course has no democracy and human rights, and Venezuela, under which democracy and human rights are a deep threat. Uh, and I, I don't get the sense, I don't get the sense that the State Department uh, has the drive and the conviction uh, of these views by actions. Uh, I'm sure, uh, I think it would be fair to say that we allowed the Latin Americans when uh, Senator Rubio and I were pursuing the legislation which we thought was necessary to do, we were asked by the administration and told by the administration we're trying to allow our Latin American partners to get Maduro to walk in a, move in a different direction. Isn't that fair to say that we did try, we gave them space and time to try to achieve that? Yes, you did. Okay. And they have, did not succeed. Now, I look at the President's own declaration, which I applaud, and I look at drug trafficking. What, where do drugs end up? They end up in the streets of our cities. They end up addicting our young people. That is a national security threat. That would be whether it's Venezuela or any other part of the world. When you look at the amount of drug trafficking that is taken by Venezuela, when you look at the specifics of our own administration naming the Venezuelan National Guard as part of this process, uh, I just don't quite get it uh, as it relates to the statements that are, are made by, by the department. Uh, the Venezuelan National Guard, members of the military directly involved in narcotics trafficking, uh, Mr. Smith, uh, we have this $2 billion, this comes after, $2 billion. This is, I don't know about, even, in, even here, that's not chump change. $2 billion that ultimately works its way into the U.S. financial system. $2 billion taken from the people of Venezuela because PDVSA is in essence the national patrimony of Venezuela. And I think the people of Venezuela who are suffering enormously as a result of the Maduro government would be far better off with having those $2 billion in Venezuela helping their lives. So how are we, going, how are we acting as it relates to these $2 billion uh, that made its way into the United States financial system? So, sir, I can say the Treasury Department has been engaged in, in vigorous actions across the board, and uh, for many of the activities that you've been talking about, we've been working for years on nar narcotics trafficking. We've designated across the board narcotics traffickers. I appreciate when you ask about, about the two, the two billion. When you ask about the two billion dollars, that was an action that one of my sister agencies, the F Financial Crimes Enforcement Network, took, and that's the agency that I'd have to refer this question back to. Okay, so you, you have nothing to do with it's, that? It's, it's another part of my department. Okay, so you can't speak to that. Can you speak to that, Mr. Lee? No, sir. Oh, my God. We come to a hearing 
on Venezuela. There's two billion dollars siphoned out of PDVSA, and no one's capable of responding to it. It's just, it's amazing. It's amazing. Let me ask you. Let me ask you this. Uh, the the actions that have been taken under our legislation, while I recognize the convenience of responding to Venezuelan sanctions against seven U.S. officials with parity, the parameters set forth uh, in our legislation and their expansion under the President's executive order leaves many other Venezuelan officials eligible given their complicity in human rights abuses, certainly more than the seven that have been named. I and other members have specifically called for Defense Minister Valdemir Padrino Lopez to be added to the list of sanctioned individuals given his role in authorizing the use of lethal force against unarmed citizens. To that end, do you agree that current U.S. law clearly leaves other Venezuelan officials eligible to be targeted for sanctions? Clearly we have, um, as a result of the law and the executive order, uh, the authorities uh, to use against human rights violators um, and uh, senior officials engaged in corrupt action. We are... So the, you, we, it's, a, it's a simple question. I'm not asking you who. I'm asking you, do you believe that the law allows you to pursue other Venezuelan authorities who may in fact fall in the categories as determined both by the law and the president's executive action? Executive order, I should say. Yes. Or Mr. Smith, if you're the appropriate person. Yes. Sorry. Yes, okay. Uh, and finally, uh, can you tell me what we are doing uh, about how OFAC makes a kingpin designation. What are the implications and consequences uh, in pursuing kingpin designations, which several people here have been in Venezuela? Sure, the uh, OFAC works with a, a broad interagency group that is specified in the statute um, to make kingpin designations. We gather the evidence, we compile it, we run it through to make sure that there are no law enforcement or intelligence equities, and then we make the kingpin designations. Uh, the president has the authority to make what are called the tier one designations of significant foreign trafficking uh, individuals or entities, and then OFAC has the authority to make the those that are tier two, the material support and others. Last year we did over 200 kingpin act designations. It's one of our most active programs, and we continue to pursue those vigorously. All right. Thank you, sir.